All right, take your Bible. Turn to Revelation chapter 17. Did you bring a Bible? To Good to have our visitors from... Burville. It's not Berryville, is it? It's your, if you're down there, it's Burville. Burville. Tyson Chicken Land. Amen. It's good to have them with us this morning. Make them feel at home. If anybody mistreats you today, you come see me and let me know, all right? Revelation chapter 17. Good to be here this morning. Boy, it just seems like we're just kind of dragging the service along, but we're having a good time doing it. Amen? I was. I'm having a good time. Now, God laid this on my heart. Uh, four o'clock one morning this week. I woke up, couldn't sleep, wasn't sleeping all that good this week. And uh, I'd wake up. And God would say, get your Bible out. And I'd get my Bible out and read it for a while. And God laid something on my heart. And boy, I mean, it, it shook me. It got me. Now, I've been preaching Revelation 17. I've been preaching about mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth, and something like this. I would have waited probably a little while uh, to preach it, but I didn't have anything else to preach today. So that's, we're going to move ahead a little bit. But this is part of her name. And understand that Mystery Babylon is not just a figurative image of the mind. This is a real spirit. If you want to see her as she really is, she would be the exact opposite of God's Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to say that phrase again. Holy Spirit. If God's Spirit is a Holy Spirit, those whom God's Spirit is in, God would then make them His holy people. Somebody say Amen. If Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations, is in you, then your life led by that Spirit is going to be full of things that God said are an abomination to Him. I want you to think about that. Not what I said. Not what I don't like. Or not what some other preacher don't like. I know some, I know some people. I know some pastors. I know some people on Facebook that like to put a lot of burdens on people and say, oh, if you do this, that's a sin. Oh, if you do this, you're not serving God. Oh, if you do this or you believe this or you say this, then you're following Satan. I, I've even, no kidding, because I refused to believe the earth was flat, got accused of following Satan. Guy said, well, if you want to follow Satan's lies, you go right on ahead. That's what he said. And I just asked him a simple question. If you can show me in the Bible where Satan said anything about it, I'd be glad to look into it. But he didn't. So let me read this, starting at verse 1, Revelation 17, verse 1. There came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Notice that she is a great whore with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Let me ask you a question. Does God still condemn fornication? How does the Bible define fornication it is the marital act without marriage it is the marital act between two men or between two women it is the marital act that has been adulterated and turned into sin. 
God reserves that marital act only for those that are married. Who would say amen to that? See, we're old fashioned. We're old fashioned. By the way, we drove through a, a protest in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. We headed to this mountain to go see it. And on Lisa's side, I guess I must be in the wrong place. On Lisa's side, all the anti-abortion people was lined up down the road. And she was looking at all their signs. And I opened my window. I said, I'm going to get these people. And Lisa said, no, they're anti-abortion. I said, not over here they're not. On my side, all the pro-abortion people were over there with their signs saying, telling the government, keep your hands off my body. Well, they should have been saying that when that vaccine was going around. Keep your hands off my body. And I hollered out the window, it's murder! It's murder! Boy, I did too. It is murder, amen? That's her spirit. It's her spirit. Uh, let's see here, where were we? Verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth that committed fornication, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Fornication is a drug. That's why people get addicted to it. Just like pornography and everything else, and let me, let me just address this for a minute. Pornography, some people say, is innocent. It's just them and whoever they're looking at. But as with every bottle of whiskey and every drug, it always goes downhill to where you want a more perverse and a more perverse thing. It never just stops here. It's like the person who says, I'll just take one drink. I'll just take one hit of marijuana. That's how it is. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, Full of names of blasphemy. That's Revelation 13. That's the beast that you see there. Having seven heads and ten horns that matches. The seven heads, the ten horns match Revelation 13. The names full of blasphemy matches Revelation 13. So we just know that that's the beast of Revelation 13. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand. Full of, here it is again. It's going to say it again. Full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abomination to the earth. I want us to pray very quickly, and then I'm going to ask you a question this morning. I want you to answer, help me out this morning. I want you to respond to me with what you believe are abominations. All right, let's pray. Father, we ask your blessings now upon your word. Uh, Lord, I know, Father, we've, just, we've had a good time praying. We've enjoyed the fellowship of one another's company. And I know it's getting late in the morning. And, but, Father, Lord, now it's time to listen to your, to your word. This is the reason why we came here this morning. Father, if we just sang one song, shook one hand, that'd be good. But, Lord, it's time to listen to the word of God. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help me preach it. Help me to do it in love. Help me not to be judgmental, unduly, Father, toward anybody. Father, when it comes to the things that I know, Lord, that I'm going to preach on, I'm just as guilty as probably anybody else is. So, Father, I'm asking you, God, to just deal with all of us. And help us, dear God, to... Remove her spirit far away from our lives. And Father, help us, God, to remove her out of our homes. Bless your word this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, 
Name for me some things that are an abomination in the eyes of God. Melissa. A man should not wear that which pertaineth to a woman. A woman should not wear that which pertaineth to a man. God said it is abomination. Somebody else. Nope. Melissa can't be the one to answer all the questions for you. Homosexuality. Homosexuality. It is abomination for a man to lie with another man as he would a wife. It is an abomination, God said. Who said that? God said that. That's not preachers making that up. God said that. Somebody else. David. Yeah, human sacrifice. Abortion. It's abomination. Alicia. There you go. That's actually in my notes. Oh, you approve now, huh? She said, okay. Anybody else? All right, Melissa, did you have another one? Put her on the spot now, didn't you? Ah, there you go. And see, I counted like six or seven times God said that neither a man nor woman should lie with a beast. And I'm going, I don't need anybody to tell me not do that. But it's in the Bible at least six or seven times. God said don't do that. Now if God said don't do that, and he said it that many times, there's a meaning for it. Anybody else? All right, take your Bible, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7. <clears throat> this is what hit me. So let me ask you a question. Oh, who can I pick on here? Matthew, how you doing, Bubby? If, uh, if Reagan, oh, let's say Reagan turned about 15, 16 years old, and she wanted to let her boyfriend come over and spend the night. Look at him. You should have seen his mouth. He went. <laughs> that was. I'll kill him. In other words. You wouldn't let that in your house would you? No. Brian, what if, uh, what if some guy from down the street was knocking on your door and said, yeah, I'd like to take Noah out to the park, take him, let him spend the night at my house? Nope. I wouldn't either. If the guy come to your house, and you think he's selling vacuum cleaners, but he knocks on the door and he's selling meth, crack, marijuana. You get your choice this week. It's a special. Three joints for the price of two. Would you let that in your house? See, it goes on in this world, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Ron? It goes on in this world. And it's all, I'm telling you, it's all over this country. But that does not mean that you have to let that come in your house. Are we all in agreement on that? That's good because that's what the Bible says. Deuteronomy 7 verse 25. God said the graven images of their gods, and this is, he's telling them, when, he said, when I get you into the promised land, this is what, this is what you're going to have to do. He said, the graven, the graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire. And he was serious about it. He said, thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them. 
nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. Now, you, because you would look at that, and here's how some people do it. They would say, oh, I'm going to take that because that's gold. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chip off that gold. Give some of that to God. God don't need your gold. And God doesn't need the gold from an idol either, does he? God's rich enough. In fact, God's the one who gives the gold. He don't take the gold. He gives it. And he said, lest thou be snared therein. And I met a bunch of snared people last weekend. Snared. Snared by false religious ideas. Snared by new age practices. Snared by devils. Snared by familiar spirits. Snared by drugs and marijuana. Snared by fornication. Snared by wealth. I would say there's a good chance... Having been to Aspen and Vail, Colorado, I, I think they're both alike. They are a retirement place for rich millionaires and a getaway for billionaires. As we passed the Aspen, Colorado airport, I counted somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 private jets. Unmarked, they wasn't United, they wasn't American, they wasn't... Uh, Delta, they wasn't anything like that. They were unmarked private jets. My wife read a list of the names of people who own property in the Aspen, Colorado area. Jeff Bezos, owner of Amazon.com, uh, Elon Musk. Um, I think part of the Walmart family owns property there. A, a billionaire from Russia. One of those crooked Russia crime syndicate mob bosses owns property in Aspen, Colorado. I wouldn't give you a dime for any of those people. I wouldn't want to know those people to save my life. Those people are snared by wealth. God said, for it it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. No one mentioned idols. No one mentioned idols. Why do we not have big statues of angels in our church? God said there's a snare, be a snare unto you. I saw in the front of an Assembly of God church, huge Assembly of God church, God told one of the, uh, somebody in that church to make a huge statue of an angel and they put it right in the foyer of that church. And they said, that's God's angel that comes into this church and ministers. With, and I'm going, that's, that's devil worship. That's idolatry. He said, it's an abomination of the Lord thy God. Watch this now. Verse 26 is where it's going to, is where it's going to get you. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. Underline that in your Bible this morning. Lest... Thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it. Thou shalt utterly abhor it. For it is a cursed thing. We've already asked God to bless the message. God, help me preach this thing. That's the part that got me. Thou shalt not bring things that are an abomination into thine house. The first house that we deal with, obviously, is the house of the Lord right here. How do we let abominations into this house? Through the eyes. Paul said that covetousness is idolatry. The things that you covet that don't belong to you usually come through the windows of the eyes. And the eyes go right to the heart. And then all of a sudden now, we look upon something and we see that image now because it's carried in our heart. Men that 
might see a woman that they think is way prettier than their wife. And they don't put that, they don't work to put that out of their mind. They hide that image in their heart. And then they look at their wife and, well, she's not as pretty as that. God said, don't do that. Because you know why? You keep her image in your heart and pretty soon your wife will mean nothing to you. And God's right when He said, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. God was right. Or it goes the other way around. Woman sees a good looking man. Nice man. Maybe he's got a little money. Maybe he's got this, got that. And she buries that image down in her heart. And then she starts comparing her husband to some other man. You know what Paul said? Comparing ourselves among ourselves, we're not wise. And pretty soon, the woman can't stand to be married to that man because she saw something that she thought was better. And she brought that into her house. The same thing goes with anything else that was mentioned. Same thing goes with money. I've been out with the money people all last week. I was out with the money people in Aspen, Colorado, Vail, Colorado. Lisa wanted to stop in Vail. She's looking for a place to shop. So we th thought we saw a, a little shopping area. So we pull into Vail and park the car and we walk up the parking garage steps and we come out into this open area right next to a fur shop. When's the last time we had a fur shop in Festus? <laughs> Helen, re you remember there ever being a fur shop in Festus? There was a pet store once. <laughs> you could probably buy chinchillas there, but fur shop. And uh, all of a sudden now my wife is going, this is not what I thought it would be. <laughs> and I agreed. It was nothing but big money everywhere. You know what? Some people are, you know what some people are like? They like hanging around that. Even if they ain't got two dollars in their pocket. They like hanging around that. They want to feel rich. They, they, will, they will buy the fur coat and they will buy the $200 North Face jacket. And they will buy clothes like this, put it on credit to make themselves feel rich but they're not but it's too late it's already set in their heart and it's an abomination <clears throat> what else did God say was an abomination well, let, let, let me get to the other house your home your house house that's why I asked Matthew would Reagan's boyfriend wants to come over and spend the night he, you, did, you should have seen him went Shoot him, amen. There's just certain things you shouldn't let go on in your house. Amen? All the things we've mentioned so far, they don't belong in your house. Now, the devil has more than one way of getting in your house other than the front door. In fact, he will almost never use the front door. He'll come in Used to be, he would come in over the radio. Yeah, I said radio. Back when we used to listen to music that we shouldn't. In our little earplug. Listen to our AM radio. And then he would come in through the TV set. Things that should never be allowed into the home. I remember my aunt and uncle were coming up to visit one time when I was young and 
They was all staying up late visiting and the went off and Johnny Carson come on. And my aunt said, Judy, do you think we should have that on with Mike and Melissa in here? She was right. Turn that off. We didn't need to be watching that. Years later, Channel 11 decided to go blue for a while. Y'all know what that means? They decided to play shows and movies that had a little nudity in it. That was when I was about 16. Shouldn't bring it into your house. Then they got cable. Cable started bringing pornography right in through the television. It got into the house, didn't it? Well, then forget all that now. Now we have the internet. Children with phones, tablets that are unmonitored, un... Um, Boy, I'm losing my words. I'm losing my brain here. Huh? Unmanaged. Parents, let me give you some advice. Start putting software on your kids' phones and tablets so they can't get to that stuff. Because let me tell you what they are going to do. They are going to watch something that you don't want them watching. And they're going to do it in your house. And God said, don't let it come into your house. That's what God said. Then we have the house of the Lord. When I was a teenager learning how to play the piano, my favorite type of piano song to play was Scott Joplin ragtime music. And anytime I would come in here and sit down and play like the entertainer or the maple leaf rag or anything like that, my mom would say, ah! you don't play that here. But mom, it's just, I, I, I. she said, this is the house of the Lord. You don't play that in here. Now we have churches playing rock and roll music. I mean, not Christian rock. I'm talking about rock and roll music in the service. Preachers talking about things that ought not be talked about. Doing things that ought not be done in the house of God. It's already been brought into the house. And God said, if that happens, you'll be snared and you'll turn into that is what you'll do. He said, you shall utterly abhor it for it is a cursed thing. Leviticus 18.22, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And I am surprised at the number of men that I personally know have turned themselves over to sodomy. Turned themselves over to it. They brought it into their house and the thing that they brought into their house, they became snared by it. And now they can't get rid of it. They can't shake loose from it. It has a hold on them and they can't stop. Is that what you want? Do you want to be hooked into something that you absolutely cannot get out of? Like a magazine subscription. Publisher's Clearinghouse. You filled it out. And now all of a sudden you got 27 magazines coming to your house every month and you're going, did I do that? Yep. And you owe the bill for it too. And, you, and you, when you call them, they say, well, you can't get out of that. Leviticus, and then it's in the church of God. Pastors marrying sodomite men together, sodomite women together. Or the pastor, him or herself, being a sodomite or transgendered. It's in the house of God now, and it's a snare. Leviticus 20, 13, If a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. 
God said there are condemnations for things that you do and you can say to yourself all you want to. It's just me. It doesn't affect the rest of my family. It doesn't affect my church. It doesn't affect my work. It doesn't affect anything else. Who believes that? Who believes? Who believes that a sodomite man can be a third grade school teacher? And, well, he won't lust after those children. It's already set in. Deuteronomy 22, 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So this video I watch of that, that black grandfather going to his grandson's school with his camera phone in his pocket filming the teacher as he says, How come you let my grandson put on a dress? And she said, Sir, you need to go talk to the administrator. He said, The administrator didn't do it. You did. I'm here talking to you. I'm here to tell you, you don't ever put a dress on my grandson. Sir, you need to go talk to the principal. Now, I'm not talking to the principal. principal didn't do it. You did it. That man was right. That man was probably lost as a goose, but he knew he didn't want his grandson to wear no dress. For all that do so are an abomination of the Lord. Joe Biden picked people to be in his cabinet specifically because their number one recommend, recommendation was, or their number one requirement was, they were transgendered. It wasn't that they were the best at doing their job. It's just that they were queer. And that's why he put them in. All these things are an abomination unto the Lord. There are no pictures of Mike Hoggard on the internet wearing a dress. There are no pictures in my sock drawer of me wearing a dress. There are no pictures, period, of me ever wearing a dress. So if you see one on the internet, it's not me, I can tell you that. Not even for Halloween would I, did, did I do that. I'm going, no, I don't. God said, don't do it. God said, don't do it. Deuteronomy 7, 25. The graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the gold or the silver or the gold that is on them. Near. Take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein for it is abomination of the Lord thy God. That's what we read a while ago. As I said earlier, some people get snared by silver and gold. They think that making more money, making more money, making more money is the way to go. And they get snared by it. Some people, all they want is to be rich. All they desire is to have more money, more wealth, more things. And so they go into debt hugely and wear and buy and want to look like they're wealthy, but they're not. And it's a snare. Paul said, having food and raiment wherewith we ought to be content. Somebody say amen. What if God brought you to a place in life where that is literally all you had? Was just the clothes on your back and food to eat. Deuteronomy 12, 31. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods, for even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Let me tell you what the 21st century equivalent to that is. Number one, it is abortion. And I was right in telling those people, it is murder. And there's no way around it. Can I get God's people to say amen? So then let me ask you a question. Why would you ever vote on a politician who favors... Sodomite marriage, transgenderism, and abortion. Who said amen? Let me hear somebody else say amen. amen. Oh, preachers shouldn't tell people how to vote. I'm telling you how to vote. The reason why these 
these people are getting away with what they're getting away with is because church people voted on them, put them in office. Well, you know, they're for the working man. We was told down at the union hall that we all going to lose our jobs unless they, people got in office. You know what I told Matthew? Matthew got it. One of his first big jobs he got was working for a, a carpenter. Big carpentry company. Built houses. And naturally, he had to join a union for it. He come home one day and just excited. His whole dad. Oh, you should have seen it. Some guys showed up at work, and he said, they brought food. Oh, there was food everywhere, and, and things to drink, and man, it was just, oh, it was great. I said, let me guess, they were from the union hall. And he said, yeah, they were. And I said, let me guess, they told you who to vote for. Yeah. I said, that's why. Am I right? Does that happen? See, God said he hates that stuff. He's not going to have it in his house or in your house or in this house. He's not going to have it. We have voted every election for the politician who promised us the most wealth. But we have failed to vote for people who promised to bring in righteousness. Deuteronomy 13. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice, and you shall serve Him and cleave unto Him. You know how that word cleave is used earlier in the Bible? Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh. You know what that means? It means that no matter what happens, their marriage becomes indissoluble. It means that that man can't live without that wife and that wife can't live without that man. That's what that means. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. False prophets, false Bibles, false teachers, false doctrines. Number one, you should not let them come into your house. Number two, you should not let them into your house. Number three, you should not let them come into this house. That's why I didn't just get on the phone to some organization and say, do you supply preachers for missing pastors? Because I need somebody Sunday. I don't care who it is. I just need somebody here. I only called who I trusted. And I'd rather miss the vacation if I couldn't get somebody here rather than turn somebody loose on you. It happened before. And I swore I would never let it happen again. And I want to commend this church for the way they acted in my absence a few years ago. Deuteronomy 17, Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Number one, it's teaching about there's only one sacrifice, and that's Jesus Christ, the unblemished one. Somebody say amen. You know what else that means? Parents, you should teach your children, give to God not what is left over, but what is first. And what is best, that's what you give to God. 
You should teach your children that when it comes time to pay your bills or pay your tithes, guess who comes first? Let that come into your house instead of giving to God the change left over in your pocket. Because your children see that. And the next generation of church whose income will be based upon your children, they'll be living off pocket change. Deuteronomy 18.9 When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire. That is, by the way, I didn't get done preaching that. That's abortion. You know what else that is? That's turning your... Can I preach this? Can I preach it? You haven't heard it yet. The best things I remember from childhood were not how much TV I got to watch when I was a kid. The best things that my parents ever gave to me as a child was their time. My daddy was taught by his daddy, son, treat your family like they're your best friend. That means when you go somewhere, they go with you. Daddies don't go spend all night at the beer hall, the pool hall, the dance hall, the casino, and then come home one o'clock in the morning and, and talk about how good their family is. And I know everybody's got to have a job, but I, wouldn't, I would not take a job that forced me to go all over the country for most days out of the year and leave it up to somebody else to raise my children or to give them quality time. Nor, listen to this, nor would I want the addictions and the problems of my life Force me out of raising my own children. Say amen. You're turning your children over to the altar of Baal to be burnt. You're sacrificing your children so you can go party. There shall not be found among you anybody that uses a divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. You know what that means? I wouldn't let my kids watch TV shows with this stuff on it. Or cartoons. Or comic books. Or library books. Or anything else. You're turning them over to the devil and God said it's an abomination. You that stuff in your house. If a woman came knocking on your door and said, yeah, I'm a palm reader. Can I come in and read all the palms everybody in your house? I, I'm, I'm a witch. I, 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 I can heal everybody in your family by doing witchcraft. Can I come in and do that in your house? You wouldn't let them in, would you? Then turn the stupid stuff off your tablet and your cable. Or anything else that influences your children. For all that do these things are an abomination of the Lord. And because of these abominations, Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. You know, I'm telling you, most children who were in my wife and I's age group, when we were growing up in church, that generation has left church and turned themselves over to other gods. God said, don't do it. Deuteronomy 27, 15, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination of the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsman, putteth it in a secret place. That's right here. 
And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Turn to Proverbs 6. Now, since Alicia mentioned that, I don't let her come up and preach the rest of the message. No, I'm not. That's an abomination. You don't want a woman preacher in here, do you? Then quit listening to Joyce Myers. Proverbs 6, 16. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Now I'm going to say a couple more mean things to you. Number one, a proud look. Do you know why you bear a cross? Do you know why you bear a cross? We have people in this church that are alcoholics, drug addicts, they struggle with very, very deep emotional scars. But there is a reason why they do that. It is because it is God's way to keep them humble. Because a proud look before God is an abomination. A lying tongue. Children, young people, listen to the preacher. We learn how to lie at a very young age, three, four years old. And then we, we work and shape and craft our imaginations so that our lies get better and better and better. I knew a young man he used to go to church here years ago, went to our Christian school years ago. He became an adult, and I was talking to him one time, and actually kind of had to confront him about something, and he admitted to me, he said, Mike, I'm a pretty good liar. He said, I can look you right in the eye and lie to you, and you'd never know it. it took him years to work on that. God said a lying tongue is an abomination. The best thing that you'll ever have going for you is the truth. The unvarnished truth. Hands that shed what kind of blood? So was I right yelling out my window at those people calling them murderers? You think I was right, Megan? Well, I'm glad you said that. Because I'm not sorry I did. I only wish I could have stopped and got out of the car with them. Okay? Because I, you'd probably seen me on the news. Just saying. When it comes to stuff like that, I'm glad I was driving. Because I just don't tolerate that very well. Hands that shed innocent blood and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. You know what that is? That's a man or a woman who sits and fantasizes. Fantasizes. Feet that be swift and running to mischief. That's people who leave one bar and say, Hey, I know where there's another one. And they'll run down to it. A false witness that speaketh lies. That's related to gossip, by the way. And then he that soweth discord among brethren. You know, I love my mom, I love my sisters, I love all my family, I love my wife, I love my kids, my grandkids. And if you were to come barreling in here and you were trying to split one of my kids up away from 
their family, I'd get involved in it. I would. I would get involved in it. I don't tolerate anybody who would try to fill one of my kids' head with a bunch of garbage and try to split my daughters or my sons or their families up from Lisa and I. Amen. And you know what I believe? I believe you ought to feel the same way about your church. We actually have a greater brotherhood here in this church than your own blood kin. Amen. Which means you don't tolerate anybody who tries to separate you out from your family in this church. Can I hear God's people say amen? amen. God said it's an abomination. You see, the devil, here's what he's a master of. Now, I'm going to shut up and let you go. Here's what. <laughs> go back to sleep. Here's what he does. First thing he does, he starts coming into this house here. You know what he's doing? Megan, he sees a lamb that's in a flock. And the wolf says, I can't get that lamb. He's in the flock. And the shepherd's right there. If I can get that lamb talked out and away from that flock, then I'll get him. How true is that? Did I, is what I said true? See how simple that is? See how simple that is? And when your pastor sees you gone a couple, three Sundays in a row, I start getting worried. Because I know, I know what I would do if I got separated from the flock. I wouldn't last very long. But those who sow the discord are an abomination to God. You don't let them in your house. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning. Lord, we had a good prayer time. But, Father, maybe somebody here just needs to have another one. So right now, Father, as you deal with hearts, speak to mine, speak to theirs. And, Lord, I, I guess if we were to just be honest, we're all guilty. We're all guilty of letting something come into our house that should never be there. Once it's there, it's hard to get it out. Once they move in, it's hard to get them out. And Father, there may be somebody here this morning, right now, that may have already had some sort of seed of discord buried in them. And... They're already maybe thinking about not coming next time. God, would you step in and intervene? Or maybe, Father, maybe somebody's got eyes on somebody in our church. Wanting to find a way to get to them. To get into their family. God, would you step in and not let it happen? And Father, we know there's tax always on our church. Always. God, would you step in and not let it happen? 
Father, these are the people that I came back to see. These are the people that I missed while I was gone. Lord, I was glad to meet some new people, made some new friends. But Father, these are the people that I came back to because I love them. And I don't want anybody taking them out away from here. Father, would you bless us as a church? Father, would you bless our homes? And Father, would you deal with us individually about things we've brought into the house that ought not be there? And help us, Father, get rid of it while there's still time. Bless the preaching of your word this morning. Dismiss us in your care, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.